Lumix S-Series cameras have in-body image stabilization, and some L lenses will have in-lens stabilization, giving you what's called dual IS. Today we're going to walk through all of the different ways you can control the IS system, including when you adapt lenses that are not native to the L mount. Let's go ahead and go on the menu and walk through the system. Image stabilization can be adjusted either from the top tab, which is the photo tab, or it can be adjusted from the movie tab. It's called image stabilizer. On the movie tab, it's the bottom option. On the photo tab, it's the second to bottom option marked image stabilizer. When you make an image stabilizer adjustment, it's important to note that if you adjust it in photo, it will affect video and vice versa. These are not independent adjustments. Once in, your top option is operation mode. The first option is that it's always going to stabilize up, down, left, right, diagonal, pitch, and yaw. The bottom option is called auto. If the camera detects that you're panning with the subject, it won't stabilize in the horizontal direction, so you're not constantly fighting the stabilizer as you pan with your subject. When to activate. Its default is at half press. That means it's not going to stabilize until you press the shutter button halfway down. The alternative is always, meaning that it's always going to be stabilizing. E-stabilization. This only is a video feature, so you have to be recording video. But what this will do is it's going to use a region of the sensor, crop in just a little bit, and stabilize in that unused part of the sensor. And then we have Boost IS. Boost IS is a very aggressive stabilizer for video shooting. It effectively gives you the look of being on a tripod, even though you're hand holding the camera. Now let's exit our menu and try adapting some lenses over to the system. This is an active adapter you can see by the pins that are on the back of it. When you connect an active adapter to the Panasonic S-Series cameras, there will be communication that happens between the lens and the body. Autofocus will be available on select adapters. But what's important for us right now is that as we zoom the lens, it's communicating the focal length of the optic. This means that the stabilization system can correct itself as we zoom to 70 millimeters. So your stabilizer shouldn't need any additional adjustment with an active lens mounted to the camera. Let's go ahead and try mounting a passive lens to the system. The adapter has no pins, meaning there's not going to be any communication between the lens and the body. So when we mount this adapter, to the camera. The camera has no idea what the focal length of the lens is, so it doesn't know how to work with the stabilization system. Go into the camera's menu, go to stabilization, and you'll see a new option for focal length. At this point, we have the lens set to 24 millimeters, so we need to change this to 24. You can either change the numbers here or you can use one of our presets. In this case, that would be 24 millimeter. We hit set. You can now see 24 millimeter in the menu. Remember, with a passive lens, if we zoom the lens to 50 millimeters, it cannot communicate that it's at 50. So you need to go back into the menu and change the focal length to 50 millimeters. So now that we've used an adapted lens that's passive, We'd like to use a 645 Mamiya lens. This is a medium format lens, and this allows us to use a focal reducer to give us one extra stop of light and to give us a little wider angle of view than an 80 millimeter normally would be. So we're going to dismount this lens. Here's our focal reducer. You can see it has a lens element in the middle. When we mount this and tighten it, we can now mount it to the camera. So this is an 80 millimeter lens. When it's mounted to the camera, it would be a 1.9, and it'd be a stop faster than 1.9, actually, in this configuration. But we don't want to tell the camera that this is an 80 millimeter lens. We need to do some math. This focal reducer is actually a 0.71 focal reducer. So you take 80, multiply it by 0.71, and that comes out to roughly 56.8 millimeters. Go into the camera's menu, go to stabilization, we need to change the focal length to 56.8. And now we're fully stabilized. 
One additional stabilizer feature is called our IS status scope. IS status scope can be accessed from the cog or gear tab. It's the second to bottom option. That option is called monitor display three. And when you turn the status scope on, it gives you two red targets and a green ball in the middle. As you'll be able to see, when we press and hold the shutter button down, the camera will try to move the ball within that targeted area. In the center target, that means that the stabilization is at its most effective. If that green ball begins to move to that outer circle area, the stabilizer will be less effective. And if the green ball touches the edge of the outer circle or further, that means the stabilizer is no longer able to steady against your hand movement. IS Status Scope will teach you how to hold your camera more steady so you get sharper photos. And that's all of the great features we have in the image stabilization system of the S-Series cameras.